This screencast covers the materials from Module 2, Lesson 11. It's based entirely upon the problem set, including one of the more complicated word problems from the problem set. It does not cover any of the homework word problems. Those are not particularly difficult, and you should be able to tackle those on your own. So let's get started. We have some problems here with these thought bubbles, and uh, they're trying to show the thinking. You uh, have one that's partially done for you. Here's the second one that uh, is, is blank. So what they want you to do is, one, first round your factors to the nearest, uh, to the greatest uh, place value of the factor. So we have 3 and 55 hundredths, and we're going to round that to 4. We should be able to look at that and know that. And we're going to look at 89. We're going to round that to the nearest 10, which is 90. Notice that we both rounded both factors up. That means our estimate is going to be greater than the actual product. So we're going to multiply 4 times 9, 36, and we have that 0, 360. Now, what are we thinking when we do this? We often have... Uh, expressed our number as uh, in the unit form. For example, we would look at 3 and 55 hundredths and we'd say 355 hundredths. And when we do that, we're in essence multiplying the original factor by 100 and when we multiply it by 100, each one of these digits goes to a place to the left. So we have 3 in the 1's place, and we move that to 3 in the 10's place, to 3 in the 100's place. And each one of these uh, digits is moved over to the left two places. So this becomes, goes from 5 tenths to 5 1's to 5 10's, and this goes from 5 hundredths to five tenths to five ones. So in essence what we're doing here is multiplying that. So we're just going to show the thinking here in this little thought bubble. We're going to multiply three and fifty-five, put a decimal in there, hundredths times one hundred, and we get three hundred fifty-five. When we multiply that, we're going to end up with a number that's a hundred times bigger than it has to be, so we have to make an adjustment at the end. So, I'm going to do this out, and we're going to just pretend that the decimal's not there. Basically, we're going to look at this and treat it as if it were 355, and then we'll do a little bit of thinking. So, let's get started. 9 times 5 is 45. We'll regroup that 4. 9 times 5 is still 45. Plus 4 is 9. Regroup. We'll cross that out so we don't get mixed up. And 9 times 3 is 27. Plus 1 is 31. Okay, now we're going to multiply from the tens place. And we multiply from the tens place. We won't have any ones. So we'll put in our 0. And we have 8 times 5 is 40. Regroup by 4. And 8 times 5 is still 40. Plus 4 is 44. Regroup by 4. And I have 8 times 3 is 24. Plus 4 is 28. So we'll find the sum of those numbers, uh, our partial products. So I have a 5 in the 1's place a 9 in the 10's place, a 5 in the 100's place, I have 11 in the 1000's place, do a regroup, and we have 2 plus 1 is 3 in the 1000's place, 10,000's place. Now that's the number we have, and remember we multiplied this by 100, so our actual product here is 100 times greater than what it should be. So in order to adjust that back, we're going to take that and we're going to divide it by 100 and we end up with 315 and 95 hundredths. So our answer is here, 315 and 95 hundredths. 
and we're going to show our thinking here. We're going to take our product, 31,595 divided by 100 equals 315 and 95 hundredths. Let's go on to another one. Uh, the, there's four more problems that have us use the standard algorithm. I'm going to sort of flesh out this process one more time with one of those problems, even though you don't have to. Okay, you have four examples of varying complexity. Uh, I picked one of moderate complexity. So we're going to rewrite this problem and we're going to talk about some of the thinking that's involved here. Now, instead of dealing with a decimal, I'm going to take that number, we'll, have, we'll write it in unit form, and then we're going to write uh, as, uh, do some multiplying. So I have 147, 8300. So we're going to convert that to unit form, so that is hundredths. And what we did when we did that is we, in essence, took 147 and 83, 83 hundredths. We multiplied that by 100, and we got our 14,783. So let's just multiply that out with the 14,783. And we're going to multiply that times 67. Well, we're going to multiply from the ones place. So we have 3 times 7, or 7 times 3 is 21. Regroup. 7 times 8 is 56. Plus 2 is 58. Regroup. 7 times 7 is 49. Plus 5 is 54. Regroup once again. 7 times 4 is 28, plus 5 is 33. Once again, we regroup, cross that out so we don't get mixed up, and I have 7 times 1 is 7, plus 3 is 10. And that's our first partial product. Now I'm going to go on and multiply from the tens place. We'll put in that zero. And let's begin. I have 6 times 3 is 18. Regroup my 1. 6 times 8 is 48, plus 1 is 49. Regroup. 6 times 7 is 42, plus 4 is 46. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 4 is 28. And finally, 6 times 1 is 6, plus 1 is 8. Crossing that out once again, find the sum of our partial products. I have a 1, I have my 6, regroup, I have a 4, regroup, and that's 10, regroup, and we have a 9, and a 9. And what we want to do here is since we multiplied initially by 100, we're now going to divide by 100 to get our uh, product uh, as it should be. From So basically this answer here is 100 times larger than the true answer. So we'll do that and we will rewrite that. course we will put our decimal in here having moved all my digits two places to the right this time all right of course I could just do that in the standard algorithm I could have just put this here and we would put that there um, I probably should have done that in a different color but I'm, I'm showing you one way to think about doing this um, like what we did in the thought bubbles we're trying to visualize this a standard algorithm you don't have to go through all this stuff here and let's get on to kind of problem 
All right. So it says explain, use the whole number product. So we've got a whole number product given to us. And we need to explain uh, how we know where to put the decimal point. So let's begin. I would say that 707, let me get our tool out, 7, and 68 hundredths is the same as Seven hundred sixty-eight hundredths. So all I have to do is to take seventy-five thousand two hundred sixty-four and divide it by 100. 75,264 divided by 100 equals 752 and 64 hundreds. Very simple. We'll do one more example for you. In this case we have uh, another number. This time our decimal portion of this is a is it go only goes to the tenths. So let's let's go over that. So I could write 123 and 9 tenths equals 100 1,239 tenths. So, I just divide 56,994 by 10. 56,994 divided by 10 equals 5,699 and 4 tenths. I'll write my answer in there this time. Alright, now we're going to do a word problem, uh, a little bit more complex. I just think it's good to model this sometimes uh, to help you build your skills as a problem solver. We have a living room that measures 24 by 15 feet. An adjacent square dining room measures 13 feet on each side. If a carpet costs $6.98 per square foot, what is the total cost of putting carpet in both rooms? Well, a lot of little things here. Let's uh, First of all, what's that word adjacent? Okay, Adjacent means next to. And if you think about it in the classroom, you sit adjacent or next to uh, other kids in your class. So that's what adjacent means. Let's draw a picture. We have a rectangular living room. So we'll put in the living room. We'll just draw it 24 by 15 feet. An adjacent square dining room, so it's right next to it, measures 13 feet on each side. When we see this, we immediately should think about our rectangular area models. We could use the rectangular area model to find the areas of each one of these. And of course, we could also use the standard algorithm. So when we do this, we have to find the number of square feet. And, and by multiplying, we'll do that. And of course, we have one product, and we have another product, and we want to know the square footage of both of these put together. So we're going to have to, one, find the area of the living room, two, find the area of the, uh, the adjacent dining room, and we'll have to find the sum of those two areas and then multiply it 
times six dollars ninety eight cents. Let's get started. I could use that area model, but I'm going to use the standard algorithm this time. So I'm going to multiply. Let's set up the problem. I have 15 times 24. Let's multiply it out. 5 times 4 is 20. Regroup. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. We're multiplying from the tens place, so we'll put our zero in the ones place. And we have 1 times 24 is 24, making a partial product of 240. Find the sum of the partial products, we get 360. Let's go on to the, the dining room, which is 13 by 13. And we'll multiply that out. Uh, 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 1 is 3 for 39. Put in our 0. And we get 169 square feet for the dining room. So we'll find the sum of the two. 360 plus 169. And we get 529. Now we have to take that. That's the number of square feet. We have 529 square feet. And each square foot costs six dollars uh, and ninety-eight cents. Well, we could do some interesting things here. We could use the distributive property and uh, figure out seven dollars a square foot, and then we'd have to multiply that times 529. And then we'd have to find two hundredths of a, of a dollar, two hundredths times 529. We could do it that way. I don't think that's going to be an awful lot easier with a number this large, though. So we'll simply multiply this out by taking $6.98 times 529. Since we have a three-digit factor in the lower place, we're going to have three partial products. When we do that, we need to be very careful to line everything up. Let's see if we can make a little more space here. Yeah, it's going to drift up there a little bit. That's okay. And let's begin. Eight times nine is seventy-two. 9 times 9 is 81, plus 7 is 88. Regroup. Now we multiply 9 times 6 is 54. 54 plus 8 is 62. Crossing those out. I'm going to erase that and just line things up a little, little bit better if I can. Well, it doesn't appear to let me erase it. Okay. I'm not sure why it behaves that way, but it does. So now we're going to go on to our tens place. We'll put our zero in. And we have 2 times 8 is 16. Regroup by 1. 2 times 9 is 18. Plus 1 is 19. Regroup. And 2 times 6 is 12. Plus 1 is 13. And crossing that out. Now we're multiplying from the hundreds place. So we're going to put in two zeros because we have no ones and no tens. And let's begin. I have 5 times 8 is 40. Regroup by 4. And 5 times 9 is 45 plus 4 is 49. Regroup. And 5 times 6 is 30 plus 4 is 34. Okay. Let's now find the sum of our partial products. We have a 2 in the 1's place. And we have a 14 here. Regroup by 1. 2 plus 9 is 11 plus 1 is 12. Regroup. And I'm going to go from the bottom up. 1 plus 9 is 10. Plus 3 plus 6 is 19. Regroup. 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 1 is 6, and we have a 3 here. Now, 
since we're doing the standard algorithm here, we know that this is the same as 698 hundredths. So we're going to take our final product here, we're going to divide it by 100, and uh, we have 369,242. Divided by 100 becomes 3,692 and 42 hundredths. Of course, that's money now. And we'll make our statement here. The total cost of carpet is $3,692 and 42 cents.